All right, so in this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to do the uh, front view of the figure in proper perspective. So this will be done with pencil. So the first thing I wanna do is divide it. Well, make a straight line how big you want your figure to be, something like so. Take that and divide it. Now you can actually use a ruler and divide this perfectly. Um, I've been doing this for a while, so I got it in my head. I, I don't recommend winging it like this, like I'm doing, but actually use a ruler and measure it out perfectly. Um, or if you don't have a ruler, something that has equal parts or something like that. Um, but I've been doing this a long time, so I'm pretty good at getting it divided. So what I do is I like to divide in half and half again like that. So that way you have the size of your head is going to fit in here. All right, that'd be the size of your head. Now from here, this is going to be where the middle of your of your figure is. So this will be where your hips are. So I'm just going to kind of, for right now, I'm just going to kind of put like a U shape in there right now for my hips. I'll probably make that smaller in a second. Then I like to divide the head in half and then in half again. Take that quarter and then that's the length here to the collarbones and then the neck will fit in here. Next we need to figure out how to get our rib cage in there. A really easy way to do that for me is first remember that the the width of the person is about three heads wide. You can go a little bit narrower for certain types of styles for, especially for females. And then I like to just kind of you know draw a straight line all the way down here or at least imagine that line going straight down like this. I want my rib cage to be smaller than that um, so about halfway in here or so. Imagine that, cutting that, cutting this head right here, these sides heads in half, right? So like that, and then that line will come down. That's gonna be about how wide my rib cage will be. All right, so now I gotta get the length. So the length goes from this crotch area, the exact middle point of the figure. This will be an eight headed tall figure. It's the easiest to learn, and then you can modify from that. Take a dot here, and this is gonna be where the like shoulders are, let's say. They're going to be on the outsides here, though. Draw a line from there going straight down to the crotch area. Take that line now and divide it in half. Now, that halfway point is your elbow, but that halfway point is also where your ribcage is going to stop. So the ribcage will start up here by the collarbones. And we're going to only go as wide that there and then start turning down so I like to kind of come wide here and like that it's about the shape about the halfway point is where it starts to you have your sternum come down I come down a little bit past it and then it comes up like this so this right here is the basic shape of the rib cage right and again the collarbones come off of that and they're going to form the arms I'm going to leave the arm not out quite as far like that. Right here at the crotch area, this is where your hands go, and the hands are about the size from the bottom of the head, so from the chin, to about where the eyebrows would be. That's about the length of your hand. And you fit the length of your hand in here like so. Now next, I like to keep the hips at around the same width. And the spine would come down like that. So the same width as the rib cage. Notice that the rib cage and the hips aren't as wide as where the shoulders begin because you come out here, you'd have the muscle on, on here like that, making your deltoids. That's going to be the widest part of the body there um, for, for any figure would be the outside of the shoulder area here. But with the difference between a male and a female when it comes to the figure here is that this part where the legs come out, you have your femur bone coming out here. For a male, it might come out like this. And then you have another halfway point, and that's where your knees are going to be. The knees are going to come right above that. The femur bones kind of come inward like this. And then you have the outer part of your leg kind of come like that, and that's going to be where your feet are. It's important that this kind of curves inward. Notice that it doesn't go straight down. I notice that a lot of people are drawing it straight down. And so just imagine the whole thing kind of being a slight triangle right here. Now, if it's a female, you might change the, the hips a little bit. So the widest part of the female body isn't up here at the hips. It's right here at the crotch line where the femur bone comes out right here. And it's going to come down more like that for a female. Right? So this way, when it when it, the skin comes off and it comes in right here and it comes out and it comes out again, that's the widest part right there of the female body. So it comes in. You have that one bump right here. It depends how, you know, sometimes this right here can have fat tissue filling all it in. So the person just has like from here to here, it's kind of like this, this kind of shape right here. But if they're skinnier, 
you'll see a little bit of that hip line and then the bone right here sticking out and that'd be, that's the widest part again. You have the serratus muscle, these muscles come in like that. Then you have your calf, calf muscle coming down, kneecap, like so. I keep it basic at first. Right, so that's the basic form of the figure and that's the proportions, it's really important. And at first you can just use like, you know, basic block shapes to, to fill in the person. Once you have the proportions down, then you can go from there and start adding other things. Now, I've already added, you know, some little bit of anatomy to it, a little bit of um, form to it. But the idea there is the same, just the proportions. That's what you want to get down first is get those proportions down. Once you have the proportions down, it's a lot easier to start doing everything else. Without the proportions down, though, you're going to find yourself struggling a lot. So make sure you get this down correctly. Um, again, some people, they're making the hips as wide as the outer portion of the body here. They're making the hips three heads wide, and that's not what you want to do. Even this down here on the female, the widest part isn't going to be three heads wide. Now, we can take this, and we can we can modify it, and, um, you know, like you can trace on top of it like by using like a light board or something like that. We'll see if we can if I can actually see through the paper here. This is a decently thick drawing paper. I actually took more than I needed. Put it underneath here. I should be able to see pretty good because I have this lit up pretty well. And what you can do then, once you have all the proportions down, is I just want to show you that if you were to take this figure and start adding on a little bit of anatomy, take that kind of shape right there that's the basic shape of the female figure right there and notice that widest part is is right here at where you have the crotch area then you have your belly button in here under rib cage and all that you would have your neck keeping it very basic the hand would fit in there I remember you have this little piece of skin that comes off with the breast attached to, and I, I talk about that later, but. So the reason why I'm doing this, and, and as I finally got my, you know, my pencil studio set up, and the reason why I'm doing a lot of my stuff in pencil now is it seems that people, people like the pencil um, tutorials. This is, you know, giving her really, really big legs, but, uh, you know, calf muscles there. Right, but that basic shape of the body is there. And that's and you can see that, and it's based on that proportion. So as long as you have the proportion down correctly, everything else is going to fall into place and look and look good. So I give her this kind of haircut here. Kind of pull that side up right there. Very, very basic uh, shape of face and stuff. A lot of style going on here. and uh, But yeah, there you go. So practice the proportions. Get the proportions down right. If you have the proportions down right, once you start learning anatomy and stuff and, and the form of the figure, it'll make it look that much better. Um, it'll look proper. But if the proportions are, are off, it doesn't matter how good to get anatomy and stuff like that. Nothing is going to look right. It's, everything is going to look a little bit weird. Right, so also... Um, be prepared for my new course coming out. It is going to be all in pencil like this, and this is the quality that you'll expect from it. And here's just some examples here. Some of the gesture drawings that I've been uh, going over in the course. Some of them are more, are more finished shading drawings, but gesture drawings are typically, uh, some of them are 30 seconds, some of them are 90 seconds long. For example, this one here is a 30 second gesture and these ones here are 90 seconds. And I'll be showing you the, the power of gesture drawing, how to draw gestures and how it can make your poses that much better and dynamic and awesome to look at, you know, within any artwork, um, be it comic books, or whatever.
All right, so just one more thing here then. Let's go ahead and draw the proportions one more time. I have all the proportions here. I just want to show what would happen. So you have this halfway point here, and the basic thing you're going to be drawing, because you're not going to be drawing all the form yet, is you're just going to be drawing this shape right here. Notice how the legs kind of come in like that, and you'll have the feet on them just as triangles. That's the basic under, under part of the body. This is the halfway point here. This is the halfway point from the whole head, and then from here to here, this is the halfway point. The knees just draw little circles above that line. For your rib cage, have your have for first, you know, divide from here to here in half, and then divide in half again. Get your head length. For now, just put a basic shape for a head. Divide in half if you want to. And then take that other divide in half, and then take that quarter length, and that's where your collarbones are going to be. Just kind of put basic collarbones in there for now. If you want to put a neck in, you can. Oops. And then a round circle I usually do like this, and then draw your little points here for your arm. Draw the line coming as a curve, straight down like this. Divide it in half. Divide it in half. The rib cage doesn't fall a little bit below that, but not much. The very, very bottom of the rib cage. Put your sternum in here. The sternum is a little bit wider than the halfway point. Now this halfway point here on the upper arm marks where your deltoid is and then where your biceps are. Right, so that's really important for later. Then just kind of put your hand length in here, which again is from the bottom of the chin to the top of the eyebrows. So it's about this length right here. That's the hand. And then I like to, when I have the, the width here, this is the three-headed width, that width, the overall width once you have the form on there for the the deltoids, the bones going a little bit, you know, a little bit closer because you need to make room for the actual deltoids. That's going to be the final length. So when you draw the actual bones, just draw them. Take this length here, divide it in half. That's where like the the how how far the rib cage is going to go out, and the hips will go out as well. And then take this part here and divide in half again. And right about there is where you want to put your arms, and that's going to be your arm bones like this. Notice I don't do the two arm bones. There's no point in doing your skeleton like that. You're just you're just practicing the proportions here. Come out like a diamond shape, almost like this. That's the basic shape of your rib cage. And then that's pretty much it. You can, if you want, you can draw like a little spinal area right here. And that is your your basic proportions with your figure. If you want, you can add basic shapes now. So deltoid shape right here, bicep shape, and then just basic triangle for down here. For the forearm. So basic shape like this, like that. And if you want to, you can just kind of curve in and come out with this basic shape here. Depends whether it's a male or female, how you're going to do that. Basic shape here, and then kind of come straight, straight down for the ankle. And there you have it. You have your basic uh, mannequin form there. One more thing really quickly here is if you wanted to turn this into a male, I just want to show you the differences. So with the male, you have the the hips and everything are pretty much the same. What really changes is that your your legs are pretty much almost the bones that come down, the femur bones, are pretty much in a straight line with this, where the female, it comes out. It's a little bit further out than this part here. So this would be the edge of the iliac crest, that little part that sticks out on females when they're skinny, on the upper part here by the belly button. But if it's a male the hip bone isn't going to come way out here like this. That is, a female is like that. A male is pretty much equal. So kind of, imagine a line coming straight down right here. And that's where the male bone is going to come in. But still, at that halfway point, draw them kind of close closer together, the femur bone still going to, is going to curve in like this. This is important. Don't draw it straight down. Draw it curved in. And then draw kind of a curved line right here, coming down to the ankles, and then draw the feet like this. Right, so that's the basic skeletal structure for the male. Everything else is pretty much identical. Um, sometimes you might want to draw a slightly bigger rib cage. Uh, it's up to you. Um, of course, you can draw slightly bigger collarbones coming out before you actually start the bone structure. Right, like that. So that right there gives them a slightly wider shoulder thinner waist and so when you add the you know the neck muscles and the trap the trapezius and you add the basic forms for the deltoids and biceps you can see that everything looks more muscular and everything looks a little bigger for the man and then you have the pecs coming across right about here 
right? Come down. And then you can still come skinny here. And then the widest part of the man's leg is actually somewhere right around here, around the halfway point between here and the between the knees and the crotch. The halfway point, the legs kind of come out right here. They're kind of buff. And then they come in here like this. All right, so if you look at like bodybuilders and stuff, this is what this holds true for them. And you have big calf muscles. Kind of drawing the legs overlapping, but you kind of get the idea. Bigger jawline for the face. Right, so that's how, if you want to fill it in with just basic um, shapes, and then that's, that's how you do that. Now, this isn't anatomy. This is just filling in the block so you can kind of see the three-dimensional structure of your body. And a mistake I'm noticing people making is they're making, they're not dividing from the top here from the collarbone to that middle elbow. Divide that in half. That's how far down your deltoids go. And a lot of people are drawing their deltoids really too far up and like balls. Just keep that in mind. It's true for both male and females. Get, I know sometimes it might not seem right, but it is, it's correct. And um, that's how you get your arms and stuff looking correct. So this is a simple mistake I see some, some of the people making when they're posting up their stuff. So hope this video will help you a little bit in correcting some of those mistakes. The reason why I made this is because, you know, I've seen a lot of mistakes and stuff that people are making. I just wanted to address it and make it hopefully uh, more clear because um, it sometimes helps if you see the, the corrections um, made. So that's it. So the difference between male and female. And then another, another trick you can do for to think about the male and figure body is the male body I think about as being kind of like a, a triangle like this and then you know coming down to the hip structure and then coming down to the legs and then that's how I think about the male body and when I think about the female body I think about it kind of the opposite kind of like a triangle coming up like this like an hourglass right so this kind of shape right here I kind of think about that shape and then the legs coming down into her feet and then her head like this. And that gives me more of that female look versus male look. So the male look is kind of like, so the overall shape here for the male is kind of like that for the upper torso, whereas the female is like this, it's almost like an hourglass. So both of them are hourglasses, but they're shaped a little bit different. Notice if we divide them in half, it's like that. And then that just having those two basic shapes, I think helps me tremendously when I'm drawing the, the male and female figure, the body, and then I can add in rest of anatomy and stuff. Anyway, get the idea. Um, yeah, so that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. And uh, one other thing, if you want to check it out, um, that's going to be using, that I'm using it right now for my course. I'm also using it right now for practice is a new software called Gesture Master. It's on Google Play. You can use it on any of your Android devices, uh, tablets, phones, etc. And I've been using it. It's really awesome. I use it in the Gesture course for a little bit. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for my new course. It'll be out soon. And uh, hopefully you guys will get an email for the discount. Um, if, if, if the Udemy email thing is working correctly, then you will receive an email for it. And yeah, it's going to be a really good discounted price for you guys that are already students. So stay tuned for that. It's um, I'm not sure the exact, exact title yet, but it's basically, you know, something about gesture drawing, mastering gesture drawing or how to draw gesture, something along those lines. And you'll see it when it comes out. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. And uh, leave your comments on this lesson here and what you'd like to see. I can always add more videos to previous courses, uh, things that people are having trouble with and things like that. I can also add bonus videos and, and whatever. So this here is uh, another lesson that wasn't there previously. And now you have it. And do you like the pencil better than the screencast for using like Manga Studio or Photoshop? Basically, do you like digital or do you like the pencil better? Let me know. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it.